Right, I'm scared of them shirts. Them chairs. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, we just got this refrigerator off Lil' West. That's the most fucking yeah. dope shit. OG, how long you been out here? <laughs> I was not expecting you to open that motherfucker. I didn't even know that was a fridge, nigga. college refrigerator. Yeah, we just, that shit boy, like shit. some fly furniture shit with all this shit on top of it. Yeah, yeah, that's like we had to nigga it up. Nah, that was some shit. I've been yeah. out here since some um, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Thugging. Got what? You fuck with Boosie? I love that nigga. I got something for you. That's my motherfucking dude right there. Man. I got something for you. What you got for me? Mm, mm, mm. I'm, I'm, I got something for you. A song? What? Boosie already got a verse on. Oh, let's work. Yeah, sir. Ski. Um, I've been you waiting. Your voice having ass. I done seen your little video looking on on some sex symbol. I ain't going shit with these niggas here. Yeah. And you sound gooder than a motherfucker I'm too, bro. Y'all got it on camera? All <laughs> oh, you fuck niggas that be talking all that here comedian shit. This OG, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, this stamp. I got the stamp. Pow, pow. There it is. <laughs> oh. You been had the oh. stamp. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no, low nigga be playing with me on a low bit, dawg. <laughs> yeah. I got a shot caller and he gonna tell, y'all. Where he going to Yeah. Ain't no motherfucking gang, my nigga. I'm gonna stay up in my lane, my nigga. I ain't gonna change a damn thing, my nigga. I'm gonna keep on going, I'm gonna keep flowing. Whoop, whoop. There go. Oh, shit. There they go. <laughs> <laughs> put your seatbelt on, nigga. Start acting right with the police car. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga always tripping, man. He nigga too much. <laughs> Yo. We got an OG in here, my nigga. Legend. Why we ain't getting no speakers? Legend. We got a legend. Oh, look. We, uh oh. You scrape? Yeah, I'm scraping. Yeah, we don't want to be bringing too much nice shit in here. No, it ain't nice shit. This shit made in 1998. What? Make sure the phone cut off. My little nephew supposed to be calling me in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We in there. What we sound like? Yeah. Everybody good? One, two, one, two. We good, cat? You get that? Can you check my mic one time for the get back? Uh-oh. Can for you the... hear that? Huh? My nigga. We put around that shit back. My nigga. Uh-huh. Did Gotta check get, that mic for the get back. Yeah. For the get back. Yeah. Did you get, hear that? Huh? Did you get that? What? Can you hear that? Yeah. For the get back. Get what back. What you said? that? Feel that. Get that. Call low. Split that. Let Ooh. me check my mic. Hello. Can you hear me? Let me put my voice up. Get it dearly. Yeah. Ooh. Got a couple niggas sitting near me. Yeah. And we try to do a yearly. Yeah. 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 Roll up another one. Still smoke the rose because you know I got another one. Yeah. I'm going to have to smoke the other one. Yeah. Buster Ryan got another son. I came through this motherfucking <laughs> chimney. Yeah. Only had one chain on. Uh. I thought he was where the motherfucker that I seen last time that he had a chain on, but like, no. No. This the new shit. New shit. <laughs> I'ma chill because you know I ain't gonna do shit. No <laughs> shit, yeah. Got my black, get my blue shit. Uh, blue shit, yeah. We be chilling on some crew shit. Ooh. <laughs> on some crew shit. Uh, uh, that's the new shit. New uh, shit. New uh, shit. Uh, we gonna get him. Bought a whole bunch of New York niggas with them. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, they in here. No fear. That's this year. DC. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, cat. Did you get that? Ooh. Get that. Where they get that? Ooh. Click, clack. When I split that. Ooh. Fuck around, I see your bitch, then I hit that. Ooh. Ooh. I put this thing. Get back. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, ah! baby. Oh. <laughs> no, what? She, you should have kept your mask on. You <laughs> want to eat the coochie. But the shit smell like booty. Ooh. <laughs> so I put my mask back up. I said, you know what? Just take a mask. I, I, I figured out. fuck with you later on. <laughs> I thought you was going to say, I put my mask back up. Uh-uh. <laughs> but I'ma still fuck. Uh, oh. I did anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey man. Y'all ain't gonna believe this shit. What we, what we talking hey about? Hey man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Oh. First and foremost. First and foremost. You will never believe who in the trap with us today. Who in the trap, Who in the Lose? trap, Lowe? What? Mr. Put your hands where my eyes can see. Uh uh. <laughs> Break your neck, huh? Keep Give talking. me some more. Keep talking. That. Who? That's the only nigga that can do this in a song. Yeah. Right. The most diabolical nigga. Talk your shit. Bust the run. Oh. We got the legend of the building. Oh. 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 O
Hold up, before we get started, I gotta oh, do it. Shit. I gotta do it. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, cut that shit, cut it, cut it, cut it. Everywhere I gotta go, to everywhere I gotta get it, and I gotta spit it. Oh, no, that's it. Listen, listen, you gotta do it. Cause I'm putting a light on running. I'm putting a light. I gotta get away, get away, get away. Better know that I don't and I won't ever stop. Cause you know I gotta win every day, day. Hey, hey, hey. You really wanna pop me. Just know that you can never flop me. Better know that I can be a little stop me. You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I come in, nigga, gotta set it, then I gotta go in, then I gotta get it, then I gotta blow it, then I gotta show the end little thing, and they can think it be doing. Cause it doesn't matter, cause I'm on the end of the day. I'm gonna put everything in the day. I'm gonna think I gotta do a lot of things to make it clear to a couple niggas that I always win, and then I gotta get it again and again and again. And I'll be doing it definitely. I'm moving a little solid, nigga. Better call a rep and everybody know my style. Niggas know that I'm the best when they come to doing this. And I be banging on my chest and I bang in the east and I'm banging in the west. I'll never give you more and I will never give you less. You been hip in the streets, you reading in the press. You really wanna know what's next? See the way we on it, we all up in a race. You know we gotta do it, take it to another pace. So we struggling and hustling and sitting and getting it. You know we gotta do it, take it to another place. Gotta taste it and I gotta grab it. And I gotta cut all through this trap. Big just the beat at the top of the throne. Better know I gotta have it. Yes! Fuck you, Top That nigga really nigga. started the lyrics. You know how much pussy what? I got because I can do that? Nigga, I used to do that shit. True story. I used to do that shit in a club in North Carolina called Lotus. They used to cut the motherfucking beat off and just let me rap that shit. And I would rap it every time I was in the club. No. And nigga, what? And you, what? Legendary. You studied the fuck out them lyrics. Nah, you know that's what I do. Now, I'm autistic when it comes to that type of shit. Nigga. OG, you listen. fool. killed that. Oh, nigga, fool. listen. Thank I'm going to tell you the oh, moment nah, where thank I you, knew. Bro. Where I knew. Thank you. Thank you, this is the moment where I knew I had to know this nigga in real life. I was watching Higher Learning and they had just beat the white dude <laughs> suck. And that nigga said, yo, nigga, stepmom's gonna be feeling me for like the next three birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> this type of nigga I need to know in real life. Yo. What? Got the motherfucking OG man, in this Man, what, bitch. man, Buster, Shitty, thank baby. you so much for, man, gracing the trap with your presence. This is an honor, man. Like, you a legend. You wanted to. Greatest to ever Legend, touch a microphone, man. man. Like you. it's an honor to have you in here. That we didn't even got to the status that you will come sit there, sit down with niggas like us, man. Hell Thank yeah. you, bro. Thank you, man. Since leaders of the new school. Thank y'all, man. Charlie Brown and Dinko D. The motherfucking right. It was, it's interesting that you you, you you acknowledging my bros, man. Where it all started from with me, cause um, I believe yesterday was the 27 year anniversary of the second and the last leaders album. Wow. I'm 28. What? You 28, bro? I'm 28. That shit crazy I'm than a one motherfucker. Years old, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Shit on myself. Going. That shit crazy, That's right? That's how long you've been doing it. Legend, my Thank you, my nigga. Thank you, bro. That shit crazy. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. Man, what keep you motivated to still do it after all this time, man, and all the, the accolades and the, and the things you've accomplished? What keep you still motivated I, to make this music? I mean, I think we can all agree just being niggas in a right mindset. Right. You come from canned food, nigga, you taste a steak, you ain't want to go back to canned food Ever. unless you choose to. Ever. I don't want to eat bologna and cheese sandwiches because I ain't got no choice but to eat the motherfucker. I want to eat it because I just still love the motherfucker. Right. And in my beautiful ass million dollar home, I could still go and get me the potato bread slices, some mayonnaise, some motherfucking beef bologna and some American cheese and slap the shit together and sit in front of motherfucking Cartoon Network and watch some shit that I grew up on like Tom and Jerry, nigga. What do you mean? I think we all that same dude at heart. The thing that just keeps the torch lit, though, is the fact that when you taste that other side of the success that come with the sacrifice and the hard work that you put into this shit, and besides all of that, you just genuinely loving this shit, and I was putting them records out with leaders. I was still living in my mom's crib. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, having an incredible mom's like mine too, she signed my deal when I was 17. I wasn't old enough to sign my deal. So, you know, mom's got to get the big salute because she could have been on an angry day with a nigga the day that that contract was on the table and said, nigga, fuck your contract. You gonna take your ass to bed because you still live in this house, nigga, and you acting like you ain't got no manners in here on this particular day talking back to me about some shit because I ain't let you hang out at that party last night past your little two in the morning curfew, which was the time that I had to bring my ass home at that time. And she could have just been on some shit. And y'all would probably never heard of Busta Rhymes ever because maybe that opportunity wouldn't have came around for a nigga again. I'm glad again. that shit didn't happen. Because who else going to say shit like, <laughs> phenomenal swing like the ass on a black chick? Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> this nigga here. Who, who gonna Yo, say he that? know, he know. Yeah. Oh, we he know it. He listen, know. Listen, man. Like, and I tell you, Lose, like, I always been a Busta Rhymes fan, but 
Los put me on to, you know, it's always the, the B-sides that most people don't know and people don't hear. Be this nigga that put me on some shit, I'm like, nigga, because nah, I always he, said you had the best beats in hip-hop history. Oh, nigga. thank you, brother. What? Yeah, that boom, 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 that he boom. used just as an interlude that should have been the motherfucking single, though. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, boy. I think it was Just Give It To Him Raw. And you used that as an interlude in, like, one of them videos. Yeah, I did make a song out of that record. I know, but yeah. it wasn't no single. It wasn't no single. It nah, was because right. I was it wasn't. like, because I how I got up on it is right. I heard the clip. I think it was in a video. It and was. You was it was in the car. And you was playing. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Found that shit on the Big album. Big up the mega, mega. Who made? Who damn? I think uh, Swiss made that beat. Swiss, mm. Swiss, beat. Swiss no. made that beat. Man, you be having to, you be up on shit like before it's the shit. Like, nah, you I, just, I love that how that you dig into beats. the catalog though, and you know joints. The that, sketch that, before "Give Me Some More" is some of the funniest shit I ever heard on a rap album. <laughs> Cause the nigga on there big capping to a bitch, right? He trying to holler at the chick, and he like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> "Bitch, <laughs> do you know how frivolous I am?" <laughs> <laughs> I got a Hummer that I only drive to my mailbox. Shit. And that's all I use it for. <laughs> the nigga said, I got custom made condoms made out of other people's dicks. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said, baby, I'll never be yours. Oh, oh, but this is, this is the whole, like, the sketch before Give Me Some More Come On. That's some of the funniest shit. We used to say that shit every day at track practice. That shit crazy. See, I'm, I'm in another era, but I still love music. You feel what I'm saying? So when you was handling your business, like you had some of the most best videos. When see niggas now, videos don't be creative, no nothing. Right. You was actually bringing your words to life. I think the lyricism niggas don't give you the respect as a lyricist, hands down. Nobody's fucking with you. I appreciate that. I Nobody's love how you come you. on the song. You will say some shit ain't got shit to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know you know at that time. And, and always for me, like, you know, I, I think the, the, the most important thing when you had the opportunity to get on the collabs, especially, because a lot of the times those moments happened on the collabs. It was just about how do you make it unfair from the first line? Because there got to be some sort of I don't give a fuck mentality that's being applied in order for shit like that to even come out your mouth and out your whole face. Right. And for me, I just, I went into these shits having so much fun because I knew the bars that I was going to include that was going to follow, that was going to be the shit that you would critique from a serious place. Right. That's why those type of things would happen in the intro. Them lines wasn't in the bars. We going to step in on some grand entry shit and just shake the room up and say some wild shit. That's how the intro was on Wuha. The fuck y'all, y'all, y'all got to do with right, anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. That is, I must decide. See, that, that is the that's, song that's a, of 2020. That's a testament to you as a nigga. Who gonna be the nigga be like, yo, what are you doing? What? Right. That's what it was. Right. Who gonna stop him? Who gonna say it? Who gonna stop him? If that nigga say, y'all, 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 niggas need to be saying it. Yeah. That's, that's my 2020 theme song. Woo-ha, got you all in check. 2020 got us all in check, nigga. I'm telling you. That's oh, what man, I had to put it in perspective. About the lyrics in the song, I gotta shit. bring up some shit that I know a lot of people never even ask you about. When you did the Turn It Up song, and mm -hmm. you put mother, one of your, your, I know like Rod Digger came up with you and under you and, and studied under you. When you heard her fuck that song up like that, what did that feel like? What song? Um, the Turn It Up, Touch It. Touch It, yeah, because Turn It Up was the, the joint over you the know, night ride. I'm an old nigga at this point. I just yeah. remember the part of the song, and that's the name of You know the one? Touch yeah. it. <laughs> Touch it. Turn around and get love it. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it. it. Touch the man. Yeah. Yeah. Feel it. Feel yeah. it. Feel it. Feel it. I turn it up, kick a bitch in the face, and put your nigga in the throat. Then I kick a whole bunch of niggas out of my house. Then we went to the trap, niggas all on the couch. Then I had another bitch, but I'm kicking her out. I get low, but you can't be trusting these niggas. They come and shoot on my Bring it out, but fuck these bitches that want to punch in their mouth when they come in and tuck it in and it all in the hell. Nigga, I'm in there. I don't have to know the words. I know the feeling. Yes, sir. I know what it feels like. Oh, you know it now. Fuck the words. Hell yeah. Rod Digger. Best, bro. The best.
she's the one of the she's probably the best female MC bar for bar to me. Wow. Her and Rhapsody is is my f- and and Lauren is my favorite three MCs in the female genetic makeup. But I don't like to call them dopest female MCs. I just right. think they're incredible MCs because I think they fuck dudes up too. I think they they violently. Not in the literal sense, but when I'm speaking in reference to competition, mm-hmm. we we not going in there to give you flowers and you know be nice. I want to reckon with you and we could be the best of friends. I don't want no friendship with you until the song is over, motherfucker. We competing. Right. So what I'm saying is, Rodiga and and Rhapsody and Lauren to me, they pen was was dangerous. I think there's a lot of moments where I might have sat down and listened to their shit and was directly inspired to start a new song. I would like cut off their shit while I was listening to it, especially if I was listening to it in the studio. Because I like playing other people's shit sometimes just to get a vibe. And if I'm listening to one of their songs and they, they they strike a, the right chord in me. I'm super driven because I'm so competitive that I will cut they shit off and immediately start a song. Sometimes you go in the studio, you ain't got a vibe. You go in there and sit around four fucking hours, five, six hours. You leave, you ain't come up with shit. Right. That happens sometimes. <clears throat> shit is like the greatest catch, you know what I mean? Is that the name of the movie on the fucking with the niggas that go out there and throw the fucking fish net in the water and mm-hmm. see if they catch the crabs Dennis and shit? Kansas, the the deadliest catch. Boy. Yeah, them yeah. niggas. Stupid motherfuckers. Yeah. See? <laughs> I knew it. Mm-hmm. So I'm a fan of that show, personally. But that's I like that. that's like the perfect metaphor, though. Bruh, I would love to see Buster Ryan watching Deadliest Catch. Yo, this motherfucker caught the most phenomenal fish. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this shit was like diabolical. This motherfucker was huge. How many crabs they caught? I think it was a motherfucking tuna or something. <laughs> <laughs> shit was crazy. <laughs> Yo, but, but, but Digger, I ain't gonna front. There's, there's been times actually in the studio making Flip Mode album where she would say shit that was so dangerous on a record, I would be like, Can't say I don't that. know if you should say that. Right. Or, let's finish the song tomorrow. <laughs> Give yourself some time. <laughs> she went that crazy. I think I had to give myself yeah, the time. Man, you know what, man? This studio costs too much. You're right. You going to have to come back during the daytime when the hours nah, is the money nah, is a little bit I'm low. I'm glad you brought she up. She go that crazy. The, the yeah, flip she, mode she still squad, does. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. still does. By the way, we we completed a, a flip mode 20 year reunion album. Oh, that's Got dope. It. That's coming. That's coming next year. So. Hey, I'm glad you brought up flip mode squad, and I'm glad you brought. Uh, this legend over here. Come on, we got the official street corner colonel in the motherfucker. Come on, man. Yeah. Split Come star, on, split nigga. Star. Hey, man. Come yes, on, nigga. Come on, You're nigga. a real nigga. You're Bro. a real nigga, man. I'm so glad you brought him because now I don't have to ask you why you didn't. Bro, this nigga, before we even ever heard this nigga say anything, was already a legend to me. Like, this nigga <laughs> was so funny in the dangerous video. Oh, that's so God. That nigga yeah, crazy. He Split. Went crazy. Split. It, the reason why me and Split was so magical is because Spliff don't give a fuck neither. That's the beautiful thing about the way we was molded and shaped from a cultural standpoint. Like we we Caribbean niggas. I'm a Jamaican nigga, he a Trinidadian nigga. So the showmanship that we displayed, a lot of that shit come from dance hall culture. And, mm-hmm. and I don't think people really understand this whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. Like, Kool Herc is a Jamaican nigga. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The whole concept of having big ass speakers stockpiled on top of each other and playing loud ass music outside, that come from Jamaica. That's dance hall culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Kool Herc brought dance hall culture to the US and gave birth to hip hop culture. The only thing that changed was the type of music that was played mm-hmm. and how it was played. <clears throat> But the concept is the same. Right. So the, the thing about dance hall culture is the critics 
the audience, the way they was raised, it was in a way where, and, and in particular, the Jamaican people is just a proud people. Like, right. them niggas is outspoken like a motherfucker. And my favorite if you if you make people <laughs> from Jamaica spend their money and come to a concert, they fuck with you. If they fuck with you, they gonna let you know. If they don't fuck with you, they gonna let you know in a way that you ain't gonna be able to understand, like appreciate, digest, or accept. Yeah, I Damn. did. I did comedy at Footprints in New York. Mm. Wow, that it's the Footprint, whole Footprint is legendary. And if they like you, they will just stand there. They don't, yeah. nigga. You don't think the shit going terrible, but then they just be like, "Keep going." <laughs> you get is. one of them. All you need is one. It can be from the most random person in the whole room, but that's <laughs> how you know you good. <laughs> nigga, I would have got low. I would have been yeah, doing no, my right. shit whispering. So right. Right. But Nah, but if they don't like you, nigga, the orders is loud as fuck. Everybody in the club getting busy. Never right. OT. What? <laughs> yeah, but, but again, again, like I was saying, the reason why me and Spliff work so well is because Spliff come from the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, when we was shorties and we used to, um, you know, we cut school, we was going to the hooky parties and we was at the block parties on the block and all of that type of shit. You know, we was studying the dance hall shit, even though we was loving hip hop too. Right. The, the niggas that we studied was was Shaba Ranks and and Admiral Bailey and Papa Son and Lieutenant Stitchy and Lecturer. These Professor Nuts. These is dudes that was legends in dance hall culture and mm -hmm. and reggae music and and them dudes was the dudes that really taught you. If you would sit back and just look at some of them videotapes and. And, and listen to the, the sound clashes, which was like the battles and shit. Mm -hmm. And you would see the clashes that the artists would have at like Sting. Sting was like a, a festival that they did every year. And like Ninja Man, and Ninja Man would go against anybody and fucking the dance hall battle. A, the, but the dance, the, 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 the big clash would happen at the end of like the fourth night. It'd be like four days straight I'm just dancing. of just wilding out 20, 30, 40,000 people out there not going home and just partying. And those clashes is, would, would be so detrimental that some of them just led to violence on the stage and they could get his face bust right on stage because the disrespect would be so crazy. But the showmanship, the legs kicking all over the place, niggas jumping around the fucking place, you swinging your fucking hand, you, you, all of that shit. Yeah. While dudes in hip hop thought it was cool to just walk around with your chain on and you just hold your Johnson and you think you're too cool to really do some shit that seem a little outside of the norm. Right. Me and Spliff would look at niggas and just laugh because we knew we was going to come up there and mop the floor with their ass. Because when we get up there, we're going to do all of this extraterrestrial shit with all this other dynamite stick energy and fuck niggas up. Right. And that's, that's what was the cheat code all the time. So, you know, I'm, I'm for the first time really like getting into like the specifics of where the ingredients came from for me and Spliff. Like, like a testament to what he was saying, how's he felt like Spliff was a legend before Spliff said shit. He was. All right, cool. So it was the same way in, in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. So when Spliff was mad small, Spliff was always a, a, like a, a loose cannon, a little loose screw up top. I can so, tell that. So, so I can see the video. Yeah, Spliff, Spliff was crazy, but I ain't just talking about on an on a entertainment and a showmanship side. Right. Spliff was also a crazy motherfucker on some street shit. I'm on that. So, I felt like the talent that he was showing just organically, like Spliff one time got into a motorcycle accident and he split his shin bone down this way. It's the same dance we see today. Yup, yup. That, that one leg shit that you see niggas doing yeah, to this man. day, like the, Spliff the, created the, the, shit. The, the, the pop smoke, it, 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 all it, them niggas. Yeah, but I ain't gonna say he created it because it's a it dance hall, like when they used to call it like skanking, uh -huh. right? And 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 the, the the old rosters would do this one foot shit, but Spliff now he turned it into a big thing on the hip hop side because and and the funny shit, this out all right, so Spliff he swerving in the street right. on a fucking spree moped. <laughs> right? 
right? This is when the sprees was the shit. In it. And the nigga doing this and doing this. And the nigga curved out too far, tried to go around a double parked car, and he ain't clear the car. Full speed. Nigga slap in front of the, in the, in the back of the double parked car. Nigga flip by six foot, seven foot in the sky. Land, the way he landed, the shin bone split down this way instead of crossway. Right. So you look at this, this nigga leg got a bone sticking out this way. So Spliff, he's he on the street. <sighs> Spliff don't want crying from the niggas. Ambulance come. He don't want to cry. Spliff ain't crying in front of no nigga. Fuck you talking about? Ambulance come. Put Spliff in the back of the ambulance. When the door closed, you hear Spliff screaming as the ambulance. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. So, so, My shit. So, so a, couple de- a couple days later, you know, Spliff come out. He got the cash on. Big block party outside in the, on the oh, block. Shit. And Scratch a Toy with DJ. He was a super young nigga on the block, but was nice with the fast shit and tried to learn all the Jazzy Jeff transforming Crazy. shit and all of that, learned all of that. So he was down with a crew called TNT Crush and them niggas had the block locked, I had the neighborhood locked, their system was super stupid, so they was getting booked to do all the local shit. And Spliff, with his showmanship, he like, fuck my broke leg, I'ma still pull up in the middle of these niggas that's trying to do all their little dance shit. And then they go on the crutches and the nigga just start doing the one foot shit <laughs> with the fucking <laughs> cash. <laughs> and niggas is around him in a circle and he bodying this shit with the way he's spinning around on niggas with the cross, with the crutches on and the, the cast on and he carrying on. And I seen this shit and I was like, this nigga's incredible. At the time, I'm back and forth between Brooklyn and Long Island. Right. I'm fucking with leaders. And, um, when leaders broke up, I always was like, I'm gonna need, cause I was so used to the group and the group support Family system on stage, you. yeah. I was like, all right, I, I'm gonna do this solo shit, but um, I'm gonna need to figure this out and I'm gonna get that down to fuck with me and just follow my lead cause I know what I wanna do. Spliff at the time was still in the street. It's even before I was able to buy my own V. I come to Brooklyn, Spliff all the time. He was getting his money in the street and was still getting into trouble in the street. In and out of jail, what type of shit. I shot a couple times. But I was seeing this talent and I was just like, I, I hope that I could get or garnish enough success to save this man's life because I knew Bruce, Bruce since I was seven. And now I'm in a position where I got a deal and this might be the only way to save, bro. He was willing to listen, though. That's all that matters. Say that one more time. That nigga was willing to listen. You mm. know what I'm saying? That's, that was the most important part. And he was listening at a time when he was already getting his own money. Right. Because he was right. giving me rides to the studio. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I needed to get to the studio, he was my whip. You know what I'm saying? One time we going to the studio, nigga had the gray 325 or the blue one. Was it the blue one? The blue th- bleed through the. All right, so we ride into the stool. Bang! We get into a wild car accident. Nigga left the shit right there. We break out. The next day, the nigga pulled up in a gray one. Fuck you talking about? You need us. We need a ride to the stool today, nigga. Hell no, nah, nigga. Not after last night. Catch <laughs> 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 no, the train. I'm good. Nigga. I'm not hopping in, nigga. You ain't catching no train, no. <laughs> nigga, them rats. I'm getting in that car. Nigga, them rats will bite you. But 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 that's 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 my brother on a whole nother level when it comes to just and he he's my elder. He's, right. he's a year older than me. But it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing when, you know, motherfuckers could respect each other enough to still be able to say, all right, you know what, bus? If this was the street shit, you would have to listen to me. Right. Yeah. But this music shit, I'm going to I'm gonna listen to you. I ain't always got to be you the driver. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Sometimes you sit in the passenger seat and mm-hmm. let the person who know how to drive this road Real drive shit. it. Right? You know what shit. I mean? Like, but you say you saw that in him and was able to recognize his talent. When did you recognize it in yourself? Like, when did you write that, that rhyme that let you know I'm nice? Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't realize that I was dope 
Cause I, um, I just always believed that I was gonna be the dopest. Period. That was just the determination and a, 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 a divine that I was claiming. Right. But I knew what I wanted to do when I was around. I say about seven, eight years old. I was being babysitted by a Panamanian woman by the name of Aunt Mitzi. She had a son named Alfonso. My mom's was working nights. And um, Alfonso used to do graffiti, like how you see the shit in the Wild Style movie. This nigga would leave the crib like two in the morning and go bomb subways, like for real. And he would create his, 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 his pieces of art that he was going to spray paint on the subway in this little black book. Mm -hmm. And the nigga used to make these motherfucking you know the markers that got the thick ass tip on them? Mm-hmm. And them gray motherfuckers. Yeah, but he was home making them shits with shoe polish bottles and chalkboard eraser. So like, you know the chalkboard eraser from elementary school, they were like felt strips right. that was together. Yeah. The nigga would rip one of the felt strips off and then the nigga would bend it and he would stick the shit inside the shoe polish. He would empty some of the shoe polish, stick it in the shoe polish, put the top back on, screw it down, shake it up, the shoe polish became the ink to the marker. Right. This nigga was a genius. All right. A genius. The nigga go to the subway and was bombing the subways with the marker and the, the tip of the marker would be like this thick. So like the thicker the tip, the iller the fucking tag was that you put up. Right. Then the nigga would bring his bag of spray paint cans and nigga had his mask on like it was COVID back then because you know the spray it fuck you up. It no, fuck you up, right. And these niggas would be out there, him and like two other dudes, they would go in like a little crew and these niggas would bomb subways and just put the most incredible shit up. But at two in the morning when he would leave, I was too young Tell to go same. with him. I understood exactly what he was doing. I was in tune with all types of shit. Right. But they had an old school underground hip hop station. I ain't gonna front, I wasn't like seven or eight. I would say I was like nine or 10. This underground hip hop station, WHBI 105.9. Red Alert, the Supreme Team who made Buffalo Gals. Two Buffalo Gals go around the outside. The, around the outside. Them niggas, the, 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 the guards was called the Supreme Team who made the, that song with Malcolm McLaren, who was an artist from, the, from, from Europe, became a classic in hip hop. They had a time <laughs> slot on this underground radio station. Africa Islam was a part of the Zulu Nation under Africa Bambada. The awesome two, Teddy Ted and Special K. So what they would do was they would get on the radio from like 2 in the morning to 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. A lot of niggas wasn't in tune with that station or the time they was getting on. These niggas used to play the live battles from some of the founders and the pioneers and the architects of this rap shit. Like, Kumo D would battle, battle Busy, Busy D. D them, yeah. That I legendary that. battle. You yeah. know about that yeah, battle. Yeah, Cold Crush Brothers, which is who leaders model their whole shit behind against the Foursome D's who ended up putting work records out commercially as a singing group, but them niggas was MCs first. Right. So they would play these live battles on the radio that was happening in Harlem World and these different underground clubs throughout the city and we was making pause tapes so you know when the radio personality talked depending on which one of them time slot it was that they were spinning you were caught in these battles and shit and when they talk you pause the tape you rewind it a little bit to right where they start talking you wait till they finish and then you unpause the tape to keep recording so it seemed like you was actually at the fucking battle and you ain't get it off the radio I used to go to school with them tapes in front of the niggas. My little young ass snuck up in the club, nigga. I got the live Kumo D and Busy B battle, you bitch ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> How about this, you motherfucker? You want a copy, nigga? Five dollars. <laughs> Five dollars. And I was hustling these, 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 these incredibly legendary, legendary hip hop moments while I was just staying up waiting for Alfonso to come home to tell me what the story was when he went to do the the bombing of the subways, because right. it was nice this nigga would come back with the endless stories about 
police running down on them niggas because obviously he vandalized right, on the subway. Right, right, right. And these niggas would come back to the crib and just had these stories and sometimes his homies would come with them. Right. And these niggas would sit there and they talking their shit and I'm sitting there as a little nigga and I'm listening to these niggas and I just was like, yo, this is really hip hop in my face. You know what I'm saying? And I'm listening to the battles and I'm like, I want to rap. I'm looking at this nigga taking pictures of the fucking graffiti pieces when they was finished and how ill they look. I'm like, I want to do graffiti. Right. I'm listening to the way the niggas was DJing and cutting shit up on them underground stations. I wanted to DJ. I wanted to break dance. I wanted to pop. I learned how to do every fucking thing in hip hop. Right. I just fell in love with it. At that point, I knew. I was gonna be one of the nicest niggas at one of these shits. At something. At one of these elements in the culture, I'm gonna be the nicest nigga at it, because I just loved it too much. The break dancing shit, I wasn't fucking feeling the bruises and the scars. Why did you imagine this nigga? You can't do this when I hear this break dancing You got to do the hand moves. Whoa, it's a rap after that one. You like, boss, you trash. Hey, Flip with a lemon head, he like, hey, man, you got to find all the rest. I'm about to go fuck these niggas up, man. Yeah. I'm about to ask about another one of my favorite songs, Ghetto what? Life with Rick James. Oh, nah, that, that record Ghetto. is legendary. Yeah. Shout out to Green Lantern on the production. You a great storyteller, by the way. Thank you, King. Thank you. I get this. I can I listen to this nigga say anything. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, put two Morgan on the fucking boy. big ass edge in that shit. <laughs> yeah. I do my documentary. Right. I got the Morgan Freeman voice. You narrate my shit. Nah, He's doing my life story. You right. this nigga was born, right? <laughs> oh, this nigga ever be born. No C-section. Badger. No C-section. <laughs> Straight out the push. No C-section. Straight out the push. No C-section. The way it opened up was so magnanimous. Hey, it was crazy to see. Yo, Shane. He, like, he didn't tear up the pussy, though. He <laughs> didn't tear up the pussy, though. Chico did. Slid right here. Oh, this is crazy. First. <laughs> and I ain't even gonna cap though, like my favorite video of all time, you and Janet Jackson. Favorite. Thank you, bro. Favorite. Well, well, go back well, to the Rick well, James well, well, shit. Well, well. Go back to the Rick James shit. That's that's gotta be next. Well, right, okay, right. but he got it, but he gotta he gotta talk about the Janet. Like the nigga closest thing to I just to wanna Jackson. know if she's what she smelled like. <laughs> I see what I'm saying? Smell beautiful. I wanna know I, I know that mole. Is it real? Is it fuck? Is that mole real? Cause I seen it on the other side one time. <laughs> <laughs> Busted like that. Yeah, I was looking know. at that. He I like, I wasn't looking at the mold. I was looking at something else, man. <laughs> it's my crazy. nigga, man. <laughs> what? It's my crazy. favorite. Yo. <laughs> All right, so Rick James first. <laughs> DC, you, you crazy than a motherfucker. <laughs> Green Lantern sent me the beat. I'm on Aftermath, and I'm probably like two years into working on this album, The Big Bang. And when I heard the record, I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself. I just thought it was one of the greatest gifts to be bestowed on me as a blessing. Because the beat was the perfect marriage with the vocals. And, and you know, when you hear the original, it's a whole nother bounce, tempo-wise and timing-wise. Mm -hmm. So I got to give it up all the way to Greenland, the way he married the new bounce which is a double time slow down version of what the original upbeat tempo was on the joint, which allowed me to do my little speed rap skedaddle on the shit the right way, but on some cool shit. Right. But I knew what I felt when I heard it. It was instinctual, the shit wasn't even no thought. I immediately got to the joint because I wanted to make sure there wasn't no room for possibility or confusion. Nigga, you're not giving this record to nobody else. So right. let, me, let me let you hear this shit with me already done, the song done. I'm on it, it's mine, off the market, my nigga. When Dre heard the motherfucker. A rap. Nah, yeah, it was, it was nothing else to discuss. Dre said, give me the session. So gave the session to Dre, and a lot of the additional music and chords and all of that other, that's, you know, the, the cascade dishwashing liquid sparkle was added to the motherfucker. Mad scientist, Dr. Dre, greatest ever. You know what I'm saying? When Dre, get, when Dre get to it, it just turns the shit into some motherfucking IMAX movie theater shit. So, you know, when I seen what Dre took it to, it just was like one of the, the highlight moments on the Big Bang album. And I loved the shit out the record. So, 
I had to call my man that could bring that cinematic shit to life, Chris, the director Chris Robinson, the legendary. Yes, and which, you know, he also did the Cavassier video for me, and he did the uh, uh, Me and Mariah video as well. So all of my moments with Chris Robinson was special, just like all of my moments with Hype Williams was unbelievable. And, and um, I can't even front, like the beauty of what's getting ready to happen with my new album and the visuals that I shot for him. I can honestly say proudly that the videos that y'all have known and grown to love a motherfucker for, mm -hmm. we took it all the way back to that shit. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it ain't none of that. It's too, it's, it's too late for me to compromise at this stage in my life. Like, I'm just married to my way. Right. Your way ain't perfect, man. And my way, it's always worked for me. And I ain't trying to fix shit that ain't broke. Right. So I mean, we we grew up on all your shit. Like it's moments that are pinpointed in our life with Buster Rhymes. Thank songs, you, man. Shit like that, and it's like, just know that you appreciate it for all your creativity and individual. Thank you. You, Gotta give you flowers right here, brother. We always fuck with you because we know you ain't gonna be sounding like nothing else. Oh you man, great. That's, like I said, you're you. gonna give us those moments that you know jump out and. Kick you in your ass. Like, <laughs> Thank you. So what Kate. made you new? Like Appreciate you was a like fast rocker. Like you don't change your shit. You just adjust to the beat. <laughs> and what made me? And they, they, they can out. <laughs> like well, who? You the goat, my nigga. You don't rap like Nep. You rap like Buster. And Buster is your bussin'. Thank you. Kate. So what? So what made you new? Like I can't rap that slow, man. Y'all, that shit, I can't do it. Well. To be honest with you, going back to the dance hall culture, like I was telling you, there's a two artists that I first ever seen do the million words in one sentence in like two seconds. Right. This one artist named Papa San and this other artist named Lieutenant Stitchy. Them two dudes was so fucking crazy. I think back in 86, they did a sting, which again is that festival. The festival, the fourth day. Yeah. They did the fourth day in 86 as a clash mm. against each other, battle against each other. And it's different then than it is now mm. because now niggas will get up there and they get so f flagrantly disrespectful. Niggas is getting their head bust on stage. But <laughs> them dudes, they would actually rehearse their battles. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like they would do shit. One motherfucker do a speed rap, the next motherfucker do a speed rap. Then they'll come in together and have a verse together that they saying the same shit, line for line, word for word, just to see who, who going to keep up with each other or who going to fuck up and get a word off and mess up from the shit in front of 20, 30,000, 40,000. So it was a collective effort, even though they was battling and display skill set and how sharp one motherfucker was over the other. Mm. But I saw that shit one day on one of them hooky party days cutting school. And I was in such amazement looking at this shit, I just wanted to do it too. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I wasn't hearing no rappers do it. No MCs wasn't doing it. I, I have to say, the only people that was fucking with it on some rap shit mm -hmm. was the originators. And the originators was the crew that Hove was down with after Jazz O. You know what I'm saying? When they did the Hawaiian Sophie joint. They was on their speed rap shit. Dodge Effects too, would you, you say Dodge? Dodge Effects is way after that. Jay-Z was on that. his speed okay. rap shit too? Jay-Z was on his shit there. Yeah, he started out, he started out with that. He rapped with fast on, what song is that? Uh, Hawaiian Can I Get a? Uh, he yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 yeah, he rapped. yeah, but Hove, Hove was on that shit really early. Like he was on it before niggas was actually commercially putting records out, just from the crew he came from. And he he was making records with them. He I don't think he was actually one of the originators. He was just... They all fucked with each other just being Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And Hove was always kind of moving on his own shit. But, you know, at the time, again, my first influence was Lieutenant Stitchy Papa San. And then me and Hove ended up going to school together and Biggie. And Hove was on that shit with the originators. In the process of me trying to get my shit together with it, me and Hove ended up having a battle. Yeah, I heard about this legendary battle. Yeah. I ain't uh -oh. never heard it from you. Guys, you got to break that one down. Wait, oh. wait, whoa. Shit. <laughs> no, 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 I thought we were about to talk about Janet Jackson, but oh, you, no, <laughs> since you brought it up. I want to talk about Janet, but I want to know who, 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 who,
But bougie. Like, 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 like I'm I'm a I'm a lead up to that because ultimately Hove got the best of the, 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 the battle in that moment. Because Uh-oh. I was I was just starting to figure out how to master my fascination with the speed bath. He was already on it. When? Yeah, he was already putting shit out, doing it at a incredible level of skill set. And was displaying that shit like he was just water spilling all over the place, just taking shape and form and however way he felt like it, because he had already been practicing. He, he, he been on his shit with it, you know what I'm saying? Me now, at that point, with my competitive ass, you know, I always wanted to have my rematch, you know what I'm saying? It, it didn't happen, which was fine, because um, <laughs> you gonna hit. I, I ended up I ended up getting getting my skill set developed to the point where I don't I don't think nobody want to fuck with it now. No, and I don't think nobody wanted to fuck with it for a long time. I mean, it's it's interesting though because there's a lot of incredible speed rapping MCs. Bone Twister, Thug. Twister, I was gonna say, Bone the only two, the only two I feel like they can fuck with you. I'm gonna be honest though, Tech Nine a dangerous motherfucker Tech too. Tech Nine now. probably like the Godfather. I don't think. Tech Nine, that's OG. I fuck with you. I mean, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go and do your homework, Playboy. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Tell me something. Tell me something. I know Tell me something. I was warn you. I'ma, this ain't. I'm 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 be honest with you, beloved. I don't know what record you heard me get on with an MC and got my ass whooped. Oh no, I ain't, I ain't saying you, 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 you the goat. Take because a L, love it. That's whatever that's you want to call shit. it. Oh, my ass serious. whooped. Take a L, yeah. lose, I don't get who it was with. You can f- get back to me on that after you do that homework. Yo, no, I ain't, saying, I ain't saying on no record a nigga bodied you. But you said that, Ever. what you just said about this? No, 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 Get you. Okay, see, is now, now my, and, and I understood, I understood you perfectly. Modell. Tech Nine is my brother. Modell. There was absolutely not too many that could fuck with him. But I think if you speak to Tech Nine directly about what you just said, mm-hmm. rightfully so, he's supposed to believe that he's the nicest. On the records that we've got on together, though. I ain't never heard of him. Okay, listen. see, that's what I'm getting ready to tell you. Mm-hmm. You might need to go visit Worldwide Chopper. Damn. You might need to go and listen that to that. Sound record. like a gangster ass amusement park. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Worldwide Chopper. It's, a, it's, a, it's Worldwide Chopper. You're gonna the- ride the AK, nigga. That's what we're gonna ask bro. You gotta excuse me, OG. I, I grew up no. listening to gospel. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. I'm on bullshit. Yeah, she going crazy. Speaking on that, like, speaking on Buzz. rapping with other people, some of my favorite albums that you was on that a lot of people might not know is them Violator albums. Oh, absolutely. Them Violator albums. Rest like, in peace to Chris Lighty. Yes, sir. We love you. We miss you, Ken. But it you was so many were MCs. The logo for that Violator. Oh, man. Thank you, my brother. Like, it was so many MCs on them Violator albums. Like, what type of motivation did it give you to be amongst all of them great MCs like that? Because you know you had LLU. I mean, it was it was crazy. crazy. So when you went in the studio and heard them verses from all of them guys, like how did that motivate you to push yourself to become a better MC? Before the Violator albums, I was fans of them dudes that ended up coming to Violator. LL is the reason I wrote my first rhyme. LL. My very first rhyme I wrote, I was 12. The name of that shit was called Pulse Rate. <laughs> LL made me write my rhyme. That shit had all type of big fucking words because that's the way he used to rhyme. Right. He just, back then it was cool to sound like a hard slunk nigga. And being intelligent was a cool fucking thing. Yeah, because his raps was flawed. You know what I'm saying? Else, and niggas ain't cursing in their records. They was busting your ass and wasn't even cursing on their shit. I eliminate punks, cut them, them up, up in chunks. chunks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so neatly. Fucking you up and wasn't even cursing. So it was like some fly shit to me. And 
you know, it was everything. It was the whole embodiment. He was hip hop when you just looked at the right. motherfucker. No rapper can rap. The, the, the candles. I, I take a muscle bound man and put his face it's in the sand. sand. <laughs> oh, mafioso. Like, yeah, nigga, that, that shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that, that shit talk that he had, it just, I believed everything he said. You know what I'm saying? Like, them niggas made you believe it. So it was just me watching this shit and just being the dude that took all of their pictures from the Word Up magazines and the Black Beat magazines. And I was just hanging on my favorite niggas on my wall, Rakim and Slick Rick and LL and Chuck D and Public Enemy. All them niggas was on my wall. Run DMC, Fat Boys. Every one of them was on my wall. I wake up and I just be in my room looking at these niggas every day. Go to C. Brown crib from Leaders of the New School. His room was the same way. And we be in them niggas, we be in Brown room when we was writing the Leaders songs. Most of the Leaders songs we wrote was in, was in Charlie Brown room in his crib because his room just had every nigga you wanted to be like on the wall. So you just look at these Ew. niggas, a hip hop mural and museum of niggas. So being a fan of them before it, made it even more incredible when they we all ended up on the same team in the same clique Violet. because now we like the fucking avengers right. nigga. Right. violator was the avengers in hip-hop right and there wasn't no clique whether it was a group of mcs that were signed to a label like rockefeller or rough rider right. death row there wasn't no management company like violator neither and it was just something else going on because Violator started, it was given birth to after Rush Management ended. Chris Lighty was a management rep at Rush Management. So under Leo Cohen and Russell Simmons, when they had Rush Management and Def Jam at the same time, they was managing a lot of the shit they had signed in Def Jam. We ain't gonna get into that. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> right. All right. nah, because you know, at this yeah, point yeah, of yeah. the entertainment world, we know what that is. Right, 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 right. It's not right. what we're doing right, right here. Really? It, was, it was okay, it was fine. Then because it, it was, they mastered, they had shit so, so fucking red carpet rolled out for each nigga that was lined up with them that you wasn't even missing bread if shit was conflicts or whatever, because it was like, just the money was just so stupid. But the point that I'm trying to make is they dismantled Rush Management. And I think Leo just came in one day and told Chris Lighty and all the other management reps, y'all could pick from the litter. Take whatever y'all favorite acts are and go start y'all own shit. Do what y'all want. So, so Chris took Leaders, Tribe, De La, Jungle Brothers. Started Violator. De La left. Tribe left, Jungle Brothers left, leaders broke up. I stayed with Chris. So he was all that I knew. So it wasn't like I even was comfortable enough gambling fucking with somebody else. I ain't know nobody else like that. And I wasn't comfortable with nobody else like that. Besides Chuck D and Hank Shockley. That's who gave birth to me. I got my name, Buster Rhymes from them niggas. And leaders of the new school came from, from Chuck. Chuck gave me my name, Chuck gave leaders our name, but he wasn't trying to manage nobody. So I still needed Chris. Now, I was the only violated artist. Wuha come out, gold in four weeks, platinum in eight weeks. The coming first album come out in 96, gold in six weeks, platinum in two months. Mm. Niggas is looking at this shit after everybody was questioning whether or not <laughs> niggas is and then and, and at this point the whole question was you know all this nigga Buster Rhymes be doing on records is screaming and with this rah rah the Dungeon Dragon shit all the motherfucking time do we want to hear a whole album of this nigga doing that nah that nigga had a whole bunch of shit <laughs> <on the> album, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, rap, but, but this is before the album came albums, this is how niggas man. was talking right right so when the album came and we was able to get it right and the success came with it and shit started sticking against the wall and the numbers was on the scoring board. Niggas respected it in a whole nother way. That's when the attraction and the appeal of Violator started to look sexier. A whole nother did. dynamic to artists. Niggas was like, oh, we, we see our niggas. niggas we might need to pull that. up. Right. 
that that was you who started that Dungeons Dragons shit. The, uh, who didn't know? T- the younger generation of hip hop. Nah, I can agree with that. You know that shit is twenty nine years ago. But that's what I'm saying. I'm it's like man. a lot of people. <laughs> the younger generation heard it first when when Nicki Minaj said it on on the verse. Yeah, yeah, you get what yeah, I mean. Yeah, like yeah, that brought yeah. it back to be like, what? You didn't right. know where that came from, right? So that was that. Nah, was and, and I appreciated her for doing that. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. I I I really. Uh, she the go too. I appreciated that record, and I actually got on the remix of that record. It never officially became a remix, but um, I sent her the verse, and she fucked with it, and she actually brought me out at the Hammerstein Ballroom in, in New York one time to do that verse live at a show that she had one time, and um. I I, I I I I I I got very very fucking out of control on that record. I, I was in love with that fucking record, so I blacked on that shit. One of my particular favorite verses. Mm-hmm. But again, being that violator, and then seeing the success that I was able to acquire with Chris being at the the head of the helm, and then Mona Scott came in like right around my second solo album when Disaster Strikes would put your hands and all of that shit came. And it was Mona and Chris. Loving hip hop, Mona? Yeah, yeah. Mona, oh. Mona ran she deep Violator. She hip hop game. Mona, Mona, Mona ran Violator with Chris. The, 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 the huge shit that Mona contributed to Violator was she wasn't only making sure that this music shit was moving and shaking the right way with Chris. She brought the whole component of the branding and and the movie shit with me, like the Mountain Dew shit that I did back then. Mona broke it that. Higher learning and all of our movies. I started fucking with Mona. Mona, Mona was bringing all of that. She was making me go to the reading. She was lining me up with the casting agents and the agencies that was bringing them opportunities to the table. That was Mona. You know what I'm saying? Chris was making sure that the the, the, the renegotiations for the record deals was in Who's behind it? Chris? several right. several motherfucking M's and yeah. the publishing deals was disrespectful M's too. Like, I'm you know, trying to get some disrespectful. Fuck you, you all bitch ass respect. nigga. Right. All this respectful money we been getting, we gotta get some disrespectful. Y'all young niggas get nasty. What the fuck, fuck you, you man. bitch ass, you bum ass nigga? I'm the bum ass nigga money. You the bum ass nigga? Right. Can't talk to him. Fuck. Look at oh. this for me. <laughs> you bum ass nigga. <laughs> to talk to you niggas yeah. crazy. Yeah. I got a cape and everything. I'm gonna get crazy. <laughs> he got disrespect for him. I got that. What you about to do, money? Right. <laughs> What's That's after crazy. this? Fuck that. That's yeah, that, that 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 management company. Twenty two years, I never looked to fuck with another manager, and the only reason that I have a new manager now. Mm-hmm which I got to big up incredibly, the legendary Steve Rifkin who founded Loud Records, that's yep. my manager, and the legendary A Blitz who used to manage DOS Effects is my co-manager. So I got some real iconic hip hop motherfuckers on my team mm-hmm. that has been a part of my growth for the entire journey. And if Chris didn't die, I probably would still been with Chris. You know what I'm saying? And um, once Chris passed, the whole violator just dismantled completely. You know, Chris was an incredibly significant leader. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, that was an irreplaceable leadership quality. You know what I mean? He was the heartbeat. He was the, the, the veins. He was the whole shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it couldn't move. It couldn't continue without him. Which is unfortunate because, again, we had Voltron, Transformers, and the Avengers all mixed together. Right. right. You still an Avenger. <laughs> you got two of the Infinity Stones on right now. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga got two of them motherfuckers on right now. He's going man. crazy, but Jesus is chilling. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, two of the Infinity Stones. I've been looking like this nigga got on emeralds and rubies. Oh, He's going crazy. Somebody called yeah, Captain man. Planet in this motherfucker. He yeah, man. up to the sky. We got to backtrack. We didn't even get to go we to the Jackson. Come on, the mole, man. Come on. 
All right. Be what, what, you, what you want first with Janet? How that whole thing came together? Listen, that whole thing with y'all getting them suits, but, all but, that, but, that, but, that, but, that but, shit but, but, is but, but, but. crazy. What's it going to be? Them craziest record ever, my guy. Thank you, like, K. Craziest. Thank you, Ben. I, I, I mean, that was a dream come true moment for me. Uh, I done told this story before. I love Janet since as early back as I can remember when she was Penny on Good Times. Right. You right. feel me? Yeah. And then when yes. she was when yes. she was uh. when she was uh, a Willis girl in, in different strokes and shit. Yes. And you know, just all of the different moments. But I, I think the moment that really just was mind blowing for me was just to hear her say my name. I know what you mean. Oh, I am, bro. It's so many. I just want to hear my name. I just want to hear my name. I just wanted to, like, just to know sh that I was on her radar. You was right. knew you she knew you. you. That was crazy. To hear my name come out of her mouth when she did the interview with Angie Martinez at the time, the legendary voice in New York, boss lady Angie Martinez, when she was at High 97. I think Janet was on tour for the Velvet Rope album. Mm -hmm. And she um, was doing promo for the Velvet Rope tour. She was performing at the Garden. So she went and did an interview with Angie Martinez. And I'm driving in the city and Angie asked her, you know, what rapper that she never worked with before that she's interested to work with mm -hmm. because she had never collabed with a rapper at this point in time outside of Heavy D. Okay. She had already did shit with Heavy D. So after the Heavy D collabs, she ain't really messed with no rappers for a long period of time. And I guess Angie, you know, thought that that was interesting. So she asked her and then she just said, I would like to work with Buster Rhymes. And she ain't say no other rapper's name. It fucked me up so I bet crazy, you nigga. Like nigga I, had to, I pulled over because I knew I was going. I was going to do something wrong. No, you got to call somebody. Nigga, somebody. I did. Somebody. This is somebody. 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 I did, my nigga. What? <laughs> Car commercial with a camera. Nigga, I called Mona immediately, and I was like, Mona, I just heard Janet say my name on the radio. That's crazy. I need you to get in touch with Janet and tell Janet that I have a song for Ready To Go immediately. Now. Drop my blood. Let, Shit now. sounded so good. I ain't have no song, though. You just had it. It was the Flats game. <laughs> it's the Flats game. Nigga was capping. I was I will. super capping. <laughs> I Yo, will. I, I ain't have no song, but I wasn't losing this moment. Fuck that. So Janet, Mona got in touch with Janet's people, and then they worked it out for us to get on the phone. I was nervous than a motherfucker at the time because I didn't want to say nothing wrong that was going to ruin the opportunity. Kept it short and sweet and immediately got to trying to find the fucking song. So we ended up finding the record and the young lady that wrote the hook to the beat, she killed it. Killed it. And then at that point, I said, all right, let me do this little speed rap dance to this shit real quick and get this ref over to Janet so she can hear the song. Did that, got the song to the queen. She heard the joint. The feedback was amazing. Now it was time to book the studio session. Right. Book the studio session. She chose the studio, because you know, obviously, shit got to be on no, Ob right. Obama levels for her to pull up. <laughs> Security had to come and advance the whole situation and make sure it was appropriate for her to walk into that space. Ooh. Did the research on what kind of flowers she liked, what kind of candles she liked, what, what kind of what niggas she liked, kind of fragrance she liked. I had, would, had it in the room for. <laughs> had everything lined up. Right. Then um, we get to the studio, and um, she came a little bit after I got there, and when she got there. When I heard she was there, I left out the room because I had another room so I could finish my raps. Mm -hmm. And I knew she needed to record, so I didn't want to be in there not being productive while she was laying her verses, stacking her vocals and all of that. So I said, I'm going to go in another room. I could just get to my shit. So as soon as she's ready and she says she done, I could be done. So 
I come in there, I say hello to her, we greet, hug, singing her praise real quick. I got the fuck up out of there fast. I don't want to fuck on the vibe, no nothing, I'm fucking up nothing. I feel it. <laughs> and, no, and, and I'm just trying to keep my mouth shut because niggas don't know this is happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going through some shit because it's like... You know what you finna do. Nigga, I'm about, I want to tell every motherfucking body, but niggas can't say nothing. Ugly, why no Instagram? Nigga, no it wasn't none of that. What, nigga? What? <laughs> What's up, my nigga? You bum ass nigga. <laughs> you are cool. Say it, Janet. Say it. You bum ass niggas. <laughs> back. I, see, I, mean, I call y'all back. Fuck you, man. Oh, these niggas. I'm finna get the fuck out. What? What? Yo. 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 <laughs> this nigga DC is crazy. Janet. Blazed the shit out the record incredibly. Thank you so much, Janet. To this day, I'm Thank forever you. grateful. Yeah. You killed that. You killed it. One of my favorite records been listened to all time. Record get done. Now we gotta come with the crazy video. I'm a movie buff, so I'm watching Terminator 2. And I'm seeing a liquid robot moving all over the place and shit. And I'm like, this is the illest shit ever. If I could pull this off, because you know. Put your hands where my eyes can see it's coming to America. Dangerous is motherfucking lethal weapon. Mm -hmm. Janet video was Terminator 2. So I was just taking my favorite movies and just putting myself in the movies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm so he he no, I'm about to like the game away. Now you can go back and watch and be like, damn, that nigga is doing the Terminator 2. Whoa, I'm doing it's Terminator 2. So, so when we did the video, before we did the video, and the budget came back for the video. I was like, you can't make a limp down no situation with Janet Jackson, nigga. So we, we got to spin, my nigga. But I definitely wasn't thinking it was going to be this type of bag. Right. This is a 10, $2.4 million video budget. Yeah. So at that time, Respectful. It was just now niggas getting twenty five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> if that, now that's real shit. If that, we gonna go to the gas station buy some white tea. Oh, let these niggas stand in the living room. Nigga, I'm gonna buy the around. camera. You press record. Right. You bum ass nigga. Right. Right. <laughs> Three scenes in the house, on the porch, and in the yard. The yard. Right. <laughs> the whole video. What? But but yeah, two two point four million for the video. The the production that was built. All of that silver room shit with the walls moving in when I was doing all of the little robot shit without a woman. All of that shit was built from the ground. Like it wasn't like I you just green screen and shit at the time. Mm -hmm. We was building these production sets in, in, in its entirety. The only thing that was the special effects was the liquid shit that I was morphing in and out of. Mm. But a lot of that budget came from this, this special effects company that we used at the time, which was the hottest effects company because they was a part of the, they did the effects for the Titanic movie. And at that time, they were super on fire because the Titanic movie won like 10 fucking Oscars or some crazy shit like that. Some crazy shit. And they Probably took, they took, they, 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 I think the company was called Digital Domain. That was a special effects company. But the, 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 the video took about three, four months to get completed because of the special effects. But when I walked on the set and the, the, the dress that Janet got on, right. the, the, the whole ensemble, I walk on the set and, you know, she had these long nails and she had these little rings on them, the end of the nails and different size rings all over the shit. Right. So I'm looking at the situation and I'm trying to understand. And, and she was like, these is cock rings. <laughs> hey, what? Hey, yo, yo, what the fuck, my nigga? You should have laid into that, my nigga. Nah, my nigga, I'm, I'm just, cock I, rings. nigga, nigga, she said this to me and I was just like, wow, what? <laughs> So what the fuck are they? What, what's cock rings? Uh, cock uh, rings, uh, uh, nigga. Dick rings? Yeah, dick rings. Yeah, nigga, stop dick. talking that talk while I'm on this set, man. I just wanted to say it one time just so oh, I can oh, put it out there. I, I ain't know. <laughs> no, no, but I ain't know neither. I'm like, these belong on you. Oh! <laughs> well, nigga, I said the same shit. Sure. I was trying to understand. I was confused. But see, 
the song was about, you know, making each other wet, wet dreams, right, 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 all right. of that shit. So it's some, some sexual shit. But I didn't know she was going to go into to, to this extreme with the fit and the wardrobe. But she, when she explained all of that, and then we saw the designer dude when the, the, the outfit was done, because the dude who created it, he took that shit home. He took it back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though we had to pay to make it, no, nah, nigga, I still own this. I'm taking this outfit back home. Fuck what you talking about. You can keep all your other shit. This design is legend, though. And we respected it, but Janet just made, she just put me in a whole other mindset when she said that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, and then her willingness to interact with me in front of the camera the way she did, it was it was really like some Real some some Better than me. beautiful that, shit. I wouldn't put a condom on like that. <laughs> <laughs> like that, nigga. What's going on, B? Nigga, I'm like, don't touch what? my face. Dress no more. latex. <laughs> Yo, I bet when Buster Ryan left that set, they were like, man, what the fuck we supposed to do with these moving ass walls? Yeah, yo, <laughs> like, we like, left, yo, we left all that shit. I ain't seen. Where we gonna put that? But <laughs> but 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 the, at the end of the day, the, the shit turned out so magical, bro, that. I don't know if I ever felt that. That magic again. I don't know if I felt it like that. That right. was that, you know, I, I've, I've done some incredible records with some of the most prestigious, iconic queens to ever do it in this music shit. You know, me and Mary J, and we got a bunch of collabs. I was blessed and honored to be rocking with her since her first album, 411. Mm -hmm. She put me on that, and, and Missy, and, and, it's, and Mariah, it's you know what I'm saying? Oh. Big up to Jane too. They was on my first album. Um, not slight nothing from none of these beautiful queens, and I'm going to continue to make iconic moments with them moving I forward. So. God it ain't a remix without you on that bitch, bro. Mm -hmm. Oh, nah. You Especially know. the long remix where it be a lot of niggas. I, I got to be like, on yeah, all I'm going to wait to that part. <laughs> the rest of them niggas, I don't even care. When is Buster coming on? <laughs> nah, thank you, bro. But you know, it's 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 throughout the, the the 29 years of doing this, man. It's it's been so many legendary moments, man. It's 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 it's, it's we we gonna probably need a two, three, four part series with the interviews with this interview because it it's just so much golden moments to share. You know what I'm saying? The the Janet shit was incredible too. But then you know, it's like. Shit, man, I'm the first rap dude Stevie Wonder collabed with on the Big Bang album. Damn. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I gotta grab my penis. Right. Hey, Stevie, you see I'm fucking with you. Fuck with that young Stevie. Stevie. He gonna hear about it. Yeah, he gonna hear about it. Just know it's a young nigga fucking with your style. Yeah. Just know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah Stevie yeah, heard Wuhan and was like, who is this person? <laughs> I must be around. Yeah, that's that's my Taurus big brother though. That's my big Taurus brother, and, and and we actually got some new magic in the works coming soon. I hope that's, I. Oh, what? I, I, yeah, we got we got another monster gum, getting ready to come soon. It's this is probably my my third collab with him because I also did <clears throat> something on his Time to Love album that came out through Universal Motown a few years ago, mm -hmm. and you know he um he fuck with. Young bus rhymes. I'm I'm the young bull. I'm the young Taurus brother of his. So you know he he put his arm around me and give me guidance and he schooled me to shit both professionally and personally. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's 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 these kind of blessings that I done I keep getting bestowed on me to be able to you know look at these moments and be like, how could you not continue to have the passion and the fire to want to do it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. Niggas is in trouble if they think that I'm going to stop. What the fuck you mean, stop? The fuck you talking about bum ass niggas? Bum ass niggas? <laughs> bum ass niggas? Fucking bum ass niggas? 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 Bum in addition to what the new album is going to be as an experience in itself, and it's it's called Extinction Level Event Two. Oh, yeah, because Extinction the Level Wrath Event of One God. was cold as hell. Thank you, brother. And um, you know, it's, it's it's ill that you you know the first song you bring up is 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 
Not what you asking for. Just give, give it, it to me, me raw. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's that was on Extinction Level One. That's that's a 22 year ago <laughs> album. <laughs> so 22 years later, you know, we looking at the shit that's going on. I've been trying to tell you niggas all of these been albums. Saying what they talking about? I've just been time trying to tell niggas about this time that's coming. Real hip hop. Right. Real hip hop. Oh, let me ask you this. Let me Real ask you this. Hip-hop. You already know. So oh, check really? this out. We had the big family uh, Gip from Goody Mob over here. Oh, gee. He told oh, us yeah, about yeah. the exact moment when you brought the Behold a Pale Horse, horse book. And, and now and we get, tell me the story. We used to be in, first of all, big up to Dallas Austin. Yeah, we're real big ups. Oh, gee. Yeah, let's super duper big up to Dallas Austin. I don't think people understand how significantly important he is to this culture and how the shift of the young black executive was ushered in really via him. Mm-hmm. A lot of niggas don't understand that. Dallas Austin was 18 years old with a four million dollar facility called Dark Studio and had like six, seven million dollars worth of cars parked in front of that motherfucker at oh, 18. God, thank disrespectful. See at the Terrible time, at the time, Terrible at the time, my nigga, he had TLC, three million, four million sold, another bad creation, two, three million sold, Boys the Men, 10 million sold. This nigga was smacking the shit out of everybody and was still a child. <laughs> Oh, and nobody was that. doing that. <laughs> Motherfucking right. Damn. He was he was saying that shit without saying it. Right. With his bread and with his resume. Oh, and Clive Davis loved Dallas. Big up to Clive Davis too. But he loved Dallas. Dallas, when I broke up with leaders, Dallas reached out to me and told me to come to the A. Dallas gave me the flip mode logo. Niggas don't even know that. I got the flip mode logo from Dallas because Dallas heard about Rampage. And he was like, I love what you're doing, boss. I think it's time for you to become an executive, though. Like, let's do something with Dallas. I mean, with Rampage, I'm going to sign you to give you a production deal through Rowdy. Just start, like, your, your, your little label shit and put, let's put out Rampage. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm fucking with everything you're talking about. I'm still trying to figure out my next move because I still didn't have the courage enough to want to do a whole solo album. So I got on my feature game. And when the leaders broke up in 93 to 96, my way of getting to the bag quick, because I was the first one to have a child in leaders at a new school. So I had to find ways to feed my son. Right. And I couldn't get it no more off for the leaders in the new school shit because no. them niggas, it was over. Right. So. You know, I'm calling the studios to find out who in there. And at the time, you know, I was already popping from Scenario. Right. So niggas wanted to hear from Buster Rhymes. So I called niggas studio sessions to find out who in there. Right. It's how the feature gang got popped. Yeah. Who I'm, in that bitch? I pioneered the feature, by the way, nigga. Hold up. What I, you I, I, just, nice. I just said. Pioneer. I just said. Can I, see e? I just said I pioneered the feature. What the fuck you talking about, nigga? Talk Yo shit. I demanded that shit, you bum ass nigga. Put me on your shit. Cause this a bum ass nigga right I'm now. I'm rap, move. <laughs> nah, but the way, the way, the way, the way that used to happen was, you know, I'm trying to make sure I find money, feed my child, call the studio session, see who in there, find out who in there, go to the bud spot. At the time, this is before any of the drove chronic. None of that shit ain't exist yet. Niggas are just smoking indica, sesh, skunk, chocolate tie, that type of shit. Everybody loved to burn the chocolate, though. I'll take $100, about 520 bags, go get the slowest burning cigars. Them shits was called White Owls. Still to the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Slowest burning cigars, my nigga. I don't like them. I don't like them shits neither. They was harsh to the yeah. motherfucker. They but they burn like slow. They nasty coochie. <laughs> God damn, nigga. Nigga, the ace and pussy tastes like a blunt. This nigga crazy. Bitch, ah. your coochie tastes like a white owl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would, I would go in these sessions and um, I pop up and I would just, you know, had a, a weed steaming and niggas would smell it. Everybody wants smoke. Everybody wants smoke. Right. 
pass that shit around. You ain't leaving without your bud, and while them niggas are smoking, you in the corner, right? right. some shit. <laughs> I get to doing a little grunt, a little dungeon dragon growl in the corner, nigga won't hear what the fuck I'm up to. That nigga been talking to himself, that's brilliant. Come on, nigga, come on, nigga. That's what I'm gonna start doing to these niggas, I'm right. popping up. Hey, bro, what you say over there? They, oh, they nigga, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, keep smoking. I mean, yeah, they had, they didn't so, forget what they first in there. Hold on, so, so how you did it, was it like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing all of that. Exactly, nigga. Just like that. I'm, I'll write, I'm, after I write my shit, I'm saying it to myself. But then I get to moments where I got to do what I actually got to do on the verse in the booth. So if I got the Dungeon Dragon growl in the middle of the verse, I'm going to do it loud enough for the room to hear it, but not hear no, it. Barry. Then they want to hear what I'm saying. Okay, now turn the mic on. Let me go do it in the booth. I get in there. I spit my shit. They can't hear the song without that verse no more. Right. We come back in the vocal, in the control room, playing the shit three, four times in a row. Niggas is high five, man. Everybody happy, the verse stupid. I leave. Chris Lighty, my nigga, listen to this joint I did last night with such and such. Yeah. Can you, can you, can you, can you send that invoice for me, please, brother? You send that invoice, the lawyers get to talking. Come pick up the check from the label. Do that three, four times a week. That shit was very fucking lucrative shit for you. Yeah. And I ain't had to split it with no crew. And I didn't have to recoup it from no budget. It was just my money for my motherfucking work that I was putting in, just beating the pavement and grinding. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was just doing all of that led to Dallas seeing the way I was moving. And he was just like, nigga, you, you, you want some shit? Let's, while you hot and got this momentum, let's put out an artist, but it's yours. I come out here, come to the Rowdy office. I needed a company name and I just went back to C Scenario Remix and I was like, open up your mouth if you want the food to get rude, flip mode, cause I'm in the mood, uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm. Yeah, man, that's how it goes. <laughs> Body get broke up, blood coming out the nose. Give me your band-aid. So I said flip mode in that verse. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm gonna take flip mode as the company name. And I told Dallas, Dallas came back with like six flip mode logo options and I chose the one that the world ended up seeing. So that's the first thing. Let's big up Dallas for that, cause yeah. Dallas, he, he, he helped me evolve into being an executive. Dallas did the same thing with Puff. When Andre Harrell let Puff go, Dallas called him and told him, come to Dark Studio. Come to the A, bro. I'm gonna introduce you to Clive Davis. Bad Boy was born. Dallas had everything to do with that, too. Because Dallas was the plug to Clive. Because Dallas was the nigga that Cloud was going to to get all of the millions of records yeah, sold. Yeah, yeah. His hand was hotter than a motherfucker when EPMD broke up. Eric Sherman, I'm a fan, come to the A. That's how Eric came down here and ended up in the A. Started Def Squad shit, started producing for Illegal, little Jamal and Malik. You remember them dudes? There was a group that was, they was two little young boys at the time. They was like, 12 and 13 years old. These little niggas was like terrorists though. He was in a strip club. and got asked a strip chick to come back to the studio with them. When they come to the store, they see these little niggas is around, niggas like Puff and Busta Rhymes and Dallas Austin. Mm -hmm. Them chicks was fascinated by shit like that. They drink and they get drunk, smoke weed, knock out on a futon or some shit. Them niggas get in the club. At 13? Yeah, people and, get and, you and, in the and, club. And, 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 and these little niggas that take their car, go crash their shit up, bring it back, park it. And I had them wake up from they sleeping off their high, thinking they crashed their own shit. And I said, these little niggas is illegal. Dallas said that that's what we gonna name these niggas. Illegal. The name of the group became illegal. Went crazy. Eric Sermon started producing all their shit, and Dallas was producing their shit, and niggas was hard. Little Jamal ended up with Death Squad. You know what I'm saying? And um, again, Dallas was very instrumental in the evolution of Puff just being a dope A&R for Mary and Jodeci right. into becoming an executive, a CEO of his own company. Same shit with Eric Sermon, same shit with Buster Rhymes. So back to Gip and Goody Mob, 
football. At that time, when we was in Darp Studio, we used to have these building sessions because, you know, I'm a member of the 5% Nation of the Gods and Earths. So I was always into knowledge of self and just researching high sciences and things of that nature. And Gip was always there. Gip was the first Good Imam member that I knew. He was always there because, you know, his, his the mother of his child, um, joy. the beautiful and incredible Joy, she was working very closely with Dallas at the time. Right. So, you know, I, I was always super cool with Joy. She's a royal empress to me as far as talent and just as a human being. One of the dopest. Get Ain't that the one of the, I lose all control yeah 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 that's the yeah. shit right there and, and gip gip is like my motherfucking brother that's that's the god you know what i'm saying george clinton at the time was coming through and he was busting our head with so much high science because he started hitting us with shit about how when they was doing their parliament funkadelic concerts and they was landing the mothership on stage that fed used to pull up to try to investigate what was these niggas trying to tell people because that Area 51 shit was supposed to be classified. Right. But them niggas was doing that shit in their shows and, you know, talking that shit in their music and it just seemed like they was tapping into some shit that was obviously oh, letting the powers that be feel like they needed to pull up. Right. So, <clears throat> they you know, just gonna pull up, they don't just pull up. Yeah. They need to, yeah, they saying. wanna figure out the fuck you getting into with this talk. So it was like, George was sharing those stories with us and the crazy shit was, as he was sharing them stories with us, he put me on to this book, Behold a Pale Horse, written by William J. Cooper. Yeah. I think he was a former Naval briefing team member. He ended up getting killed, too. Yeah, he did him grief. But the ill shit is, this book was the book that really took what I was already dealing with as 5% dealing with the God Nation the Nation of the Gods and Earths and studying my shit and combining it with this shit, which was some whole other shit. And it just changed my whole perspective, which is what turned my albums into the coming, when disaster strikes, mm -hmm. extinction Nation level level-level event, mm -hmm. anarchy, Genesis. No, no, it ain't Genesis. It ain't safe no more. Big Bang. Like this continuing storyline that's connected by the silver lining never deviating from what the concept is and what the content is. And I'm just adding these new different chapters to this book of Eli. Right. You feel me? You dropping knowledge on me. <laughs> they don't even know. <laughs> right. You kill him, OG. So, 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 so it's like George Clinton did that to me. That's the effect he had on me between the shit that he was schooling me with and that book mm -hmm. and Gip. Being that he was around this shit, I, I, I gave Gip the book. And he took it to them. Goody Mob, all of my brothers over there, Cool Joe, CeeLo and all. And when he, when they got that book, it just turned them into something else. Cell therapy was born. Mm -hmm. And they started dealing with the fucking who's knocking at the no. window. Yes, sir. Pow. Nobody And now. in the videos, niggas is paying for their food with the barcode scans. Yeah. And now when you dealing with what's going on here with these niggas talking about these mandated vaccinations and all of this wild shit, and Trump at the fucking debate talking about we can get 200 vaccinations done a day because I'm gonna deploy the military to, to give it to niggas. And what the fuck military niggas got to do with giving the nigga a vaccination shot? It's beyond me. But I'm just saying this information was fascinating back then. Right never knowing whether or not it was going to be true or come to life, but right. just the idea and the what if of it right. was fucking with niggas. And I was drawn to that shit. So, you know, Gip and them took it, they ran with it. Even Outkast, I believe, started to really get into that shit because they were Southern playalistic Cadillac music at first. And then yeah. Especially Andre. They yeah. turned into this. Yeah, they turned into aliens. That nigga had shoulder pads. You know what I'm saying? nigga had shoulder pads and the marching boots. I'm like, nigga, what are you? Fur diaper, nigga. What are you doing? on like a fur, fur drawers yeah. and shit like that. Legendary shit. Yeah, but, but you know, all of that, too, is the showmanship. You know what I'm saying? They, it was showmanship. It was not being comfortable trying to just do the regular nigga shit with right. the, the baseball fittings and the baseball jersey. 
you know, and the Tim Boots. Like, we could do that all day, but, you know, there is a, a, a nation of motherfuckers that really want to go out there and show niggas how they really feel and how they really be thinking. Right. And how we be imagining shit and the what ifs if we could pull those off. Mm -hmm. What what would the reaction really be if we just did it? Mm -hmm. right. And niggas just did it with their chests out like fuck it. Whatever right. whatever the outcome is gonna be, it's gonna be, but I'm gonna nose dive head first without a parachute and fuck it. Right. However way I land, that's what it's gonna be. Right. It, it didn't get to that point. I don't want to say that it was just me. This is before me. You know, George Clinton and them was on that. But as far as hip hop is concerned, you know what I'm saying? I pulled from Cold Crush and, and, and Furious Five because when you look at them, they was dressing up some on some shit that was Crazy. wild too. Right. They had them fucking feathers on and the fucking shoulder pads and looking crazy. And shit, they, but see, they was, yeah, they was pulling all of that shit though. Real shit in the album artwork. That's how Melly Mel and them niggas. <laughs> they look niggas like was, a, them a, niggas were standing a, up. A group of old pictures of your uncle. Real <laughs> shit. Cause everybody had that one uncle who had bullshit, but it was clean at that moment. Real look shit. At your, my look nigga. at your uncle Fred. My, my uncle don't dope. He ain't doing that. <laughs> but I'm yeah. saying like you did that, Buzz. Like you, I remember. I don't remember what video it was, but you was dressed like. One of the niggas, Chris Tucker, was fighting at Rush Hour. You had like some Japanese that shit. That was on. his oh, clothing yeah, yeah, yeah. line. <laughs> yeah. For real? Yeah. yeah. He Boosh, had a clothing line. Bushi, Bushi, Bushi. Yeah. Short for Buster shit. See? Bushido Warrior. Bushido Warrior. Yeah, Bushido. God. But I just was trying to, you know, I was just trying to maximize it all. I so mean, karate clothes, nigga? No, I ain't sell no damn karate clothes, <laughs> nigga. I, feel like, I was like, nigga, you had the go. That nigga like, I'm about to sell some. Why? Like, DC. You sold karate clothes. DC, it was close. It, it was close. Yeah, hey, I'm telling you, boy, he had that goddamn. No, nah, nigga, I'm gonna keep it a buck. We, 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 we had the fly regular shit for the street. Like we, we, I did like Averex leather spinoffs. That was bushy shit. I did sweatsuits. I did. Denim suits, like shit that niggas could wear regular. Like, you know, got to make that shit. Send us all that shit, nigga. Send us some booze. I'm going to have to custom shit. We, man, 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 we stopped doing that a while ago. Now, you ain't never lie. 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 Rasta, California. That's how you get the disrespect from millions, nigga. Fuck off me, you bomb ass nigga. Bushy, nigga. Bushy, I have a bushy. Bushy. Bushy is bushy. Bushy, nigga. What's the right? That's going to be our closing line, DC. Bomb. Bomb. Bomb ass nigga. Bomb ass nigga. <laughs> we got to talk about how you slid on the track with Mariah Carey and, and literally slid on the track. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank you, brother. She, she is incredible. First and foremost, congrats. Salute. To Salute. Mariah. She got a whole lot of incredible Salute. shit going on. I think she just put out an album October 2nd. That shit is moving and shaking, streaming crazy. She just put out a book. That shit is the number one top selling book in the world right yeah, now. Like, crazy, so and her season coming up. The, you this motherfucking the right. That cr Christmas. The Christmas, nobody can't oh, yeah. fuck with her. Nobody. Period. Period. I'm buying a gift for oh, this. Oh, that's one. a fact. Nah, nah. She, she, she got the crown for that. Okay. Forever, though. Yeah, yeah, her and nobody the Temptations. Like, forever. Her and in my mind, them the only two songs you really know. <laughs> nah, like she came up with a happy birthday song, like for real. Like that shit will never die. That 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 Christmas joint. So it's like, Never. big up to Mariah first and foremost and shit. But um, that song, bro, I got the beat from Rick Rock, my brother. Big up to Rick Rock out there in the motherfucking Bay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Salute to my brother Rick Rock. Me and Split Star was on a tour bus one time driving cross country. See from this New nigga York good to LA. Look. I told you. Split. He, he be that niggas. Split with me. Everywhere. The whole journey split right riding shotgun with me. I can see. That nigga over there. That nigga sleep with the mother. <laughs> oh, nigga shit kick nigga. I watched him a couple times. He leaned on the back of the chair like Whoa. my neck getting heavy. <laughs> yeah, now nah, we there, there was a period that I, I wasn't fucking with the plane. I just wasn't in a mood to get on the plane. I'd be getting tired of that whole plane shit. Sometimes, you know, just to, you take your shoes off and all of that. Yeah, monkey shit. It's monkey shit. shit. Yeah, so you know, it was. I, 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 I just. Uh, I think the store that broke the camel's back for me one time. This plane took a dip that felt like that shit dropped like ten thousand feet. Mm. Thought niggas was definitely finished. 
and that was the last flight for about three, four years. Mm. Built me some tour buses from the frame, brand new, everything beautiful, and that shit exactly how I wanted the motherfucker. Right. And we would live on them shits and drive from New York to LA with two of the most incredible tour bus drivers in the planet. Only time these motherfuckers would stop was the fuel of motherfuckers had to use the bathroom. But overall, it was a relaxing drive. He was able to rest. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the time, niggas is grinding so much. You ain't, until you in a situation where you ain't got no choice but to sit your ass down, right. you working too exhausting. You know what right. I'm saying? So we on the bus, and you know, while we riding a lot of the time, we playing the video games and shit. We watching wild movies, getting ideas. We listening to wild beats. Niggas are sending us left and right. You got studio on the bus. Yeah, we yeah. definitely had a stew on the bus. We got the bud on the bus. We got the lick on the bus. But but everything is just cozy. Niggas is riding out, and the beat came on. And um, I just started singing this shit with Spliff. We just started bugging out, like on some joke shit. Mm-hmm. And when the melody was done for the hook, and the words were done for the hook, we knew this shit was a smash. Right. You know what I'm saying? Figuring out who to do it now, uh, I was just like, this definitely can't be no record where we we don't get one of the creme de la creme queens of this shit to do it. To, we can't play with that. Like, we got to make sure we get the right queen for this. Right. And Mariah at that time was just the most incredible choice. And she was already my friend and she was just, She's already like super easy to do shit with. You just gotta make sure you accommodate the the, the, the boss lady the queen. way she needs, the queen. When she pull up, you gotta have your shit together. Same way. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, rightfully so. She earned the right to pass to, you know, to get that without negotiation or complaining. So once I sent her the joint and she heard it, man, she was all the way on board. And that shit was so beautiful. She got that shit done super quick, turned it around. And it's ill because it was the first time that I ever learned about vocal rest. Like, there was times I needed to talk to her about her approving the levels to the song. And we was mixing the shit and, you know, we sending it back to just get all of the approval processes all done so we could send it to master and get it mastered and turn it into the label, request the clearances and all of that. Mm-hmm. For about two weeks, we couldn't get her to talk. She was like, you can only text me, you can't talk to me. And at the time, I didn't understand that. I kind of felt like I was getting shitted on. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck you mean, Queen? You don't want to talk to me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand this shit. Like, but, you know, sometimes, especially when your voice is, 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 is hoarse, you got to shut your fucking mouth and let it heal itself. But sh- her vocal rest, and we ended up having the same vocal doctor. Um, and he's incredible, um, Dr. Kessler. Big shout to Dr. Kessler. But overall, she was a vocal rest at this point in time and was a weird experience for me because I could only speak to her via text. And she really, really, really did not speak for like two weeks. I, I, I tried wrapping my head around that. Like, even when you were in a crib with your family or with your kids or with your loved ones or whatever, no conversation? Y'all in the same crib and y'all gotta write some shit down so I could tell you what I want you to do? Or I gotta text you some shit to tell you what I need you to do? Right. Go, go go get me some something to drink. Text. Like, that was the first time I'm seeing this with her. And it was a valuable lesson because I ended up needing that same process years, years, and years later. And, um, I started to frequently lose my voice two years ago. And Dr. Kessler used to tell me I needed to go on vocal rest too, but I couldn't do that shit. Right. Oh, fuck Buster Rhymes gonna keep his mouth motherfucking shut. Yeah, what the fuck type <laughs> of shit is that? <laughs> you can't <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> you ain't doing this shit, baby. Yeah, go back to the breakdown. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nigga. <laughs> what? Cause that shit is serious, like being an artist, like even even with me and I know I be doing like the stand-up shows right. and, and I have to go to the studios and I be ah! right. I know for a fact in my mind that is 
hurting me. Yeah, bro. I'm talking about literally hurting me. Yeah, bro. So people don't understand like how I have to sometimes get off the road knowing that I want to go to the studio, but I literally have to go to sleep it's real two, shit. three days, book it on Thursday right. because I have ah! all weekend. Right. So it's a wrap. If I get it's on the track, shit. it's how do you want it? It's a wrap. Real shit. You see what I'm saying? So the vocal rest and and that just put me in the mind like, nigga, you have to continue. Got to. Do that. Two got weeks, to. don't say nothing. Nigga, that, that shit, that shit that is I a long see. Because you, make it. you gotta understand, two weeks? is your voice at its prime when you wanted to do what you, what you wanted to do? It's the best. Well, so you shit. go in the studio and you just sound the best. Yeah, well, you be quiet for Bro, two you shut the fuck no. up for two weeks. Ain't no telling who the fuck you sound like. <laughs> 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 your voice heals so much you don't sound like you no more. Like I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> like when the white man have a holly jolly Christmas. <laughs> Cold white man boy. <laughs> nah, that shit, that shit, that's lit. Nah, I appreciate it. But yeah, Mar- Mar- Mariah, man, it's... That's my that's my friend. I love her and I'm proud of her and congrats to her with all the shit she got going on right now because she's doing an amazing job. And um again, man, it's 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 exciting to be talking about all of this shit because shit, man, I'm I'm I i do not know when this this interview going to air, bro, but October thirtieth is, is is eighteen days away from right now. I don't know how many fucking days is gonna be Speaking away. Speaking the future, be like Cause this shit coming out Friday. Coming yeah, Friday. Okay, so so today so, today so, Friday so, so, for these motherfuckers. So so what's the date on Friday? Friday. What's the so date? What's the date? Today is the twelfth. The sixteenth. Yeah. So in the future today is sixteenth. T- Friday the sixteenth. Yeah, that's when the promo runs start yeah. anyway. Yeah, real what? shit. That's perfect timing. Um, so if today is the motherfucking fifteenth, the sixteenth. Yeah. Right. You see how you still today, doing your yeah, shit? Yeah. If today is the sixteenth, then y'all motherfuckers got exactly. Two weeks and two days mm-hmm. before this album hit the fucking street and shift the climate significantly. Fuck you mean. Extinction level event to the wrath of God. I am not coming to discuss anything outside of how much I am going to bust y'all motherfucking head wide open. Real hip hop! Make you niggas rap again. again. <laughs> Make these niggas rap again. They can't rap for shit. Make these niggas rap again. Nah, you know, you know, you know, you know, I ain't gonna lie. It's 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 so beautiful to be able to put out an album in this time, especially dealing with speaking directly to the times. Right. I take great pleasure in speaking directly to the times, especially when it's been a part of this storyline for the last 24 years mm-hmm. from the beginning of my solo career, not my group career. So 29 years professionally doing it since the first Leaders album in 91, but 24 years since the first solo album in 96. So to go from the coming to when disaster strikes to extinction level event, mm-hmm. and then 22 years later to come with my first sequel album, I never did a part two to none of my albums. No. This is my first part two. And this is my first album at retail in 11 years. So this is a big moment for me. You know what I'm saying? Another motherfucker dropping in two weeks and two days. <laughs> right. Real shit. What? I can't wait. Thank yeah. you for coming and sitting with us and, and, and letting us be a part of it, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, thank you, King. I, I, I'm honored to be a part of y'all because I ain't going to front. I don't watch the few interviews with y'all. Y'all motherfuckers be having me in a stool. <laughs> Wilding. So, 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 so to be here and, and y'all, and the thing that I think is dope with what y'all do, y'all remind motherfuckers how important it is to still laugh, my nigga. You know what I mean? All this wild fucking shit, this wild cowboy shit going on out here. White, po- white people acting a little crazy, a little too crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the police department acting really fucking crazy. And, you know, black people out here trying to figure it out, but they still doing a little bit of crazy shit they shouldn't be doing too. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you know, to be able to see that there is a struggle that's being fought every day on some very real focused agenda shit amongst the common man Mm -hmm. that's just out here trying to find their way because they done took all types of civil liberties away from niggas. 
they literally telling niggas <clears throat> you get in trouble if you breathe freely. I never lived, I never thought that I would live to see the day that a nigga would turn breathing freely into a mandate. Right. That really ain't even passed legislatively as a law and make it like a crime. I'm not saying no, be conscious and not to be careful. Self-preservation is obviously the first survival instinct. Right. Like a motherfucker, you better be careful. Yeah. Like a motherfucker, you better deal with self-preservation. But you also need to remember Every man has to live and die in his own iniquity, which means that with every choice comes an invoice. But part of living is living if a motherfucker ain't out here living with proper understanding. Mm -hmm. Understanding is the best part. It's the absence of confusion. Niggas is just going along with shit and complying willingly without asking any questions. Talk your shit! We ain't trying to understand some real shit. Like, okay, I'm gonna just put this mask on just because niggas told me to. I want, the, I want some real information on that shit because I really want to live. I know scientifically there is some infractions with putting this mask on and recycling the carbon monoxide that you exhale. Is it carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide? I, I, I fuck it up too. Carbon they, dioxide. They know, they know carbon dioxide, saying. right? Cool. So, you know, we ain't, we, yeah, we ain't supposed to inhale or recycle what you breathe out. Mm -hmm. We ain't supposed to do that. Like, that's just not... The, 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 yeah, it's just not what you're supposed to do. You don't eat your own shit. You don't piss and drink your own piss. You don't inhale what your body gives, gets out of its system. Right. So, you know, I, I, I think, you know, doing that and then your children doing that and some, some sort of side effect, there's going to be some damage done in that. Mm -hmm. But if you really just supposed to be protecting yourself from this crazy shit, let us do this shit with some real substantial information that can be backed up by some truth that can't be disputed or challenged because niggas really do want to live right. and motherfuckers really want to find a solution on how to get past this shit but to just be indefinitely telling motherfuckers all type of inconsistent shit and you know the regular man that just want to go and earn an honest living can't even go do that because you done took the fucking you done shut all businesses down. Right, man. We can't even pass the fucking Cavazzi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't get their own Cavazzi right. every day. And it's so open, though, but we just can't pass it. Can't pass it. They like, six no. feet away with the Cavazzi. That's a new wisdom remake. <laughs> you got a goddamn throw the ball. <laughs> nah, but, but, but overall, without getting too off the deep end with the deep shit, I right. just, again, I love the balance that y'all find and still giving motherfuckers feel good energy. Because. With all this crazy shit going on, a motherfucker do gotta remember you need to sometimes take a break from that shit. Let the second string niggas go in and fight, and you need to recharge, nigga. Right. Go learn to laugh and live a little bit and get to some feel good energy so that you can right. get back to the fight with some fuel again. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I salute y'all for that. Right. Right. Coming from the OG right. itself. That means something, man. It means something to get them type of accolades from people of your status, because you know we started doing and we this respect. Out, exactly. out of love, you know. What I mean, for each other, and just you know, knowing that we had something to get to the world, but to get recognition from somebody who has been in the game for as long as you have, and has the knowledge that you have, and has seen as many things come and go as you have. That mean the world, man. Thank uh, you. I appreciate hip -hop. it. They say hip hop, like <laughs> you said, you were sitting right there watching it. Thank you, Ken. Being in that moment, like, even when you was young, it was still another hip-hop level that even my generation don't even know nothing about. No question. You see what I'm saying? No so question. just to hear these stories, like, I got to go look all these niggas up. Real I ain't shit. even know you had a song with Tech 9 I'm going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call you, nigga. I'm going to be like, I apologize. You went crazy on this nigga, man. You feel me? So... Just to have that that gap, just be closed on some like, just like I say, bro. Like we've been doing this. Wait shit. till you hear the Mister and Bust the Ram shit. Oh dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Man, some of the crazy, crazy shit. Too. I got Twister. Twister. Big him up too. Twister as hell, yeah. All he got a he got a whole he got a whole catalog. Yeah, a whole catalog one. of him just literally just. Hey yo, Swiss, let's get this verses together and stop fucking playing. Can that sound like it's crazy. already on an album. It's my brother Swiss. Is, that's my fucking <laughs> Swiss is like my my. That's, that's one of my closest brothers in this music industry shit. Professionally and personally. That, that's a brother that I could call when I'm really having a headache with a personal issue and I could get some guidance from any younger than me. Yeah. He's just a super smart, very, very intelligent and very resourceful brother. And he's a giver, you know what I'm saying? 
And that's another thing that's important for niggas to hear. Instead of talking all of this shit about what another nigga ain't got and how much shit you want to throw up in a nigga face, it's too easy for me to stunt on niggas too. Right. From jewelry to car shit to all of that. Niggas know my rep when it comes to all of that. But I just think in these times, we just need to make a little more of a conscious effort. I'm not saying don't have fun. Have fun. I'm going to still wear my shit and shine too. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, you know, let's, let's kind of stop including in the narrative, you know, that we could be there to, to keep each other up. You know what I'm saying? Salute to my brother Scarface, because he needs us a lot right now. Right now. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Friend. 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 I, 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 I love Scarface. I want to thank Bun B for getting me on the phone with Scarface when I got the kite about what the situation was recently. And we've been on the phone speaking pretty much every day right. since then. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to be an incredible and a, and a very powerful resource to Scarface because Face is one of the brothers back in 91 when I went on a PE tour with Leaders of the New School. That nigga used to come out there with this green leather suit on in the middle of the Ghetto Boys performance, and it was like 11 of us on stage. Leaders, Son of Berserk and the Hellraisers, Tribe, Public Enemy, Kid and Play, Oak Town 357, fucking Ice T. Nigga, like this tour was so legendary, and PE headlined it and brought all of us out. And Scarface used to come out there with this green leather suit with the, with the cane and the top hat. Mr. Mr. Scarface. Yeah. And nigga, when that came on, All I have in this the world. whole what? fucking All arena go crazy. lose their shit. And it was just the spotlight, so you couldn't even see the face because the shadow of the brim from the hat was dark when it made his face dark. But he, he just had that walk. Came out on niggas on some godfather gangster shit and would sledgehammer the venue in the middle of the scarf, uh, the Ghetto Boy set. Cause they would come and do their group shit. Right. Then Willie D would do some of his solo shit. Bushwick Bill would do some of his solo shit. Uh, uh, rest in peace Bushwick. Okay. And motherfucking Scarface would sledgehammer that shit. Yeah. And these were shits that I was blessed to be a part of. So to have that kind of history with the bro and we still been able to have that brotherhood all these years later, damn near 30 years, man, it's like, we can't sit there and watch and not be able to be crutches and keep each other up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, I'm just saying that to say every generation, every demo, you know, even the generations after us, like, be them resources for each other. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, no matter how proud niggas want to act like they are, motherfuckers need, niggas need each other sometimes. Need help, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, we, we, we got to be there. One of my favorite uh, YouTube clips. You in the studio with Timberland, and then he was like, "Nigga, you ain't making no, you know, basically." Oh yeah, and I started fucking with the keyboard and, and press that shit. Yeah, that motherfucker Timberland just heard me press that. He knew what the fuck he was doing though. What? He knew he had all of them fucking tricks and treats up in the damn keyboard, and he knew I was going. Once I started fucking with it, he knew I was going to stumble on one of them shits that was going to motherfuck me up. Right, and it did. Crazy. We got to it, and that motherfucker made the joint. I actually wrote verses for that. I wrote verses for it. We didn't finish the song. With, I think I laid one verse or something, but we never went back to it. Mm. Yeah, that's a lost file. Nah, but overall, again, I, I thank y'all for having me. You know, again, yeah, I'm going to I'm I'm plug it. Extinction Level Event 2. That's right. no, we're going to plug oh, it. Yeah, God. God. We are hey, plug wait. Did you know that this podcast was voted the number one podcast amongst black people with no cable? <laughs> you lying. Right? Nope. I swear on everything. What? The people's we are going crazy. That yeah. shit is incredible. Congratulations. Oh, appreciate right. you. Wow, that shit is... Yeah. Yeah. We, on, we, are, we coming no, up no, in the no, world. We are giving up. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Fucking legend, nigga. I love that. Love, Fuck yes, that. Word. Word. You little niggas, look. If y'all fuck with me, all the little niggas are 13 and 12. Hey, 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 hey. This is where I get my shit from. You hear me? You crazy ass ab. Yeah, where, where, look at this. This is how you sound after yeah. vocal rest. Well, folks, there you have it. Bust the Rhymes here live on the 85 South Show. <laughs> Good night. We'll see you guys next Friday. <laughs> after vocal rest. Yeah, it is. Already. Wait for the sound. <laughs> thank y'all, man. No, man, thank you thank for having me. No, hey, we gotta take a picture. Oh, but this like the first iconic yeah, like you. moment 
on the 85. We done had a lot of motherfuckers. Wow. Yeah. A lot this of motherfuckers. Look at Marvin Gaye looking like, oh, y'all got booty grinds. He had to. No, real talk. This is the first time he smirked. Right. He like, you know what? Y'all do y'all think nothing. Just to be able to, like, you don't understand. I know you probably don't get it, but. We grew up watching you and to be sitting here Nigga, right I used here to ride in high school, school right here. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting here with you, but it's like, it, it is a, it, it, it show you the dreams come true. Cause if somebody would have told any of us when we first started doing this, that one day, man, you're going to be able to sit down and chop it up with the nigga that made this. The this, nigga this, was this. running like this in front right. of the elephant. <laughs> 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 the right, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like this. <laughs> Fuck the elephant. You running low? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On me. So that's what I mean, it's just like, man, it's, it's the most amazing shit ever because you, as man. a young man watching you growing up to know that, you know, like all that shit he laying out right yeah, there, like them crazy. Vibe magazines and, and all, it's crazy. like, you know what I mean, to be able to sit here and, and be amongst you and have you give us love is like my nigga shit, what God, this is this is crazy this for real thank you so much god guide your footsteps oh man thank you king thank you so much god willing he continues to help shit ain't no god willing he's going to right. continue yes, to guide my footsteps. October 30th. all of our footsteps yes, sir. What? October, what? october 30th you better motherfucking believe that on my on my baby birthday so i'm going to buy oh, some shit. gifts that's and buy your shit that's what's up that's yes, what's up that's what's up Love, man. Love. What? Fuzzy. Yeah. Hey. It's a legend shit right here, gang. <laughs> <laughs> this one gonna go crazy. What? Late at night for me to come get down. When I come over there, get in the wig. He said we can't do nothing tonight because of my kids. He said, fuck them kids. They should be asleep anyway. He said, fuck them kids. I ain't let them get in my way. Fuck them kids. That's a fact. I bribed them kids with a bag full of snacks. Fuck hey. them kids, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids, fuck them kids. With a bag full of snacks. Fuck them kids, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids, fuck them kids. With a bag full of snacks. <laughs> I came over here like, hey. Don't make me look your ass here. Huh? A kid did that? Which one? Oh, this one. <laughs> ah, I didn't even see oh, that one. Hey, boy, hey, boy. How old is it? Look at my brain. Bring it to me. <laughs> Check out the middle. That shit is hilarious. They ain't putting nothing in the middle. They ain't putting nothing in the middle. That's funny as fuck. But I'm thinking I'm just happy. DC look like Rich Homie Quan. Right. Mm. Mm. He made our ass feel look like Let's booty holes. He even put Marvin Gaye in there, though. Yeah. Ha! Ah, hilarious. Man, your ass look like R. Kelly. Fuck you. <laughs> I wanna piss on you. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. Ha! Ah. That's that key in ignition, R. Kelly. Yeah, he do look, they do gotta be looking like Kills on that motherfucker. They got Carlo looking like he working AutoZone. What's up? You look like you a And they got a tumor man. in it right here. In the ear. <laughs> <laughs> nigga said they got our ears looking like booty holes. <laughs> booty hole ears. That's hilarious. I don't know who the fuck that nigga is. That's you. Go ahead. <coughs> you, nigga. I ain't never had your ass like that. I know. You look like you said, give me a piece. American Give me a bite. They got nigga like you said. No! I look like you look like you said that shit. This sound like the beginning of the movie. Down down trying to below. commit the robbery and shit ain't going right. This he got down with that one. I, I can tell you fucked up the two. He's just yeah, blacking it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's blacking it out. He's like, God damn it. Nah, I mean, you got that nigga low showing some chew. <laughs> Me and Marvin Gaye had a show. <laughs> you, I ain't even play. That shit cold. He's looking like, where's my microphone? Who, who got the mic? It's my turn to sing. <laughs> I'm doing the ad libs. Welcome into the new world. I am looking for a new girl. If you are her, then I am him. Let's go for a swim. Not in the pool, but in your room. Won't you make me drool when I eat your coochie cool? And after, and after I get fixed, 
Coochie real then good. I'm going to pull out my big ass dick and you going to lick. Coochie. Lick. 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 I Coochie some. real good. Lick. 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 She can give it a lick. Coochie. Lick. What's up, sir? <laughs> God Coochie dang. real good. <laughs> Hell no. 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 What's that, Nigi? Yes, sir. How you live? Always. Always. It's beautiful. I'm just telling somebody. I said, man, after all these years, I still get excited every time. Come on, man. You know what we own. Trying to make this house a home. <clears throat> Hold on, bitch. Come on, oh, bitch. Let me see them tits. <laughs> Working smooth. Red, with some inside of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, like? I said, Hold on, bitch. Oh, shit. Niggas are upgrading. Hold on, girl. Oh, man. Give me some of that pussy, baby. <laughs> Now give me some of that pussy, girl. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. When you just came outside, I seen that you were dancing. I wanted some of that pussy, so I took my chance by asking me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. If you want to be my friend, then give me some again. I'm tired of asking. I'm just going to ask you when. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. The last time that I had it, it was automatic. You told me to go touch it, so I had to reach out and grab some. Give me that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. When I take you out dancing, and I'll just take my chance in, and I won't hold your hand because I'm not your boyfriend. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Give me some of that pussy, girl. My nigga new. I'm living amazing. How are you, bro? Welcome to the trap, man. <laughs> I guess we're gonna get you right here. Cat gonna get you set up. Yeah, Cat, you getting them good? Bus or bus? <laughs> Shit, everything. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Up, Give me some of that pussy, girl. Last time that you gave me some, I didn't want to touch it. But now you try to give it to me because it's in my budget. Give me some of that pussy, baby. Uh, you don't have to guess it. Oh, God. Are you just reliving time right now? Oh, wow. <laughs>